um, the overloading and overloading and uh, we're we're trying to demo, uh, show you the inheritance okay so inheritance um, in this case if we see the generalization arrow that we as we showed uh, in terms of UML it's called as a generalization uh, wherein uh, your uh, chi uh, your base class this is the base class so the automobile becomes your base class or it's called, it's called as a super class so wherein other members inherit from it so when they do inheritance what they do is if you see the list of properties and methods that are available in the base class uh, all those uh, characteristics can be uh, inherited in other words they can access all of its uh, public uh, uh, members within the derived class so whenever you derive uh, uh, to a super class the class uh, will become a derived class so this class is if you see the arrow uh, car class in you can read this as a inherits automobile so this is inheriting automobile so when this inheritance comes so the automobile becomes the base class in other words super class and the class that is deriving will become a derived class Okay, so this is the uh, basic concept of inheritance. It's pretty simple. If you uh, compare a real-time world again, um, so again, so it is a basic inheritance. You you inherit uh, the characteristics or look and feel of your parents. In other words, biological inheritance. So this is a very common characteristic that you see. You have some qualities or characteristics. Uh, uh, that your parents has uh, in terms of a look, color, feel, emotions, behavior. There are so many things that you inherit without your notice. So that's a, is in other words some even in that context some even refer to as a parent and child. So in this case automobile is a parent class and class is a, a car class is a child class. So based on the context uh, there the way they call this uh, will be different. Okay, so we'll, this is uh, inheritance. At this stage, what I'm going to say is uh, the method overloading uh, can happen uh, within the base class or in the derived class. Okay, so uh, overloading in this case, in this typical example, is there anything that I'm overloading? Yeah, if you see a uh, honk, a honk is there in the base class and the honk is there in the derived class. Okay, so uh, I might have a different, uh, um, if you see, uh, the tooltip is trying to give me uh, its signature also. The honk and it's taking only one um, parameter and in this case, it's taking the same single parameter. So I have a copy of the same uh, uh, member here, which is an overriding, again, which is the next topic that we're going to talk. And overloading comes into play if you say the string uh, start, if you see the number of overloaded members I have, I have four uh, uh, overlo overloaded members in the base class and and how many I have here? I have only two. So which are, which are again actually overriding the uh, base class. So overloading can happen uh, in the base class and also in the derived class. So in this case, uh, Okay, I have a different versions of start here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the start and put it in the car. So since car is inheriting from automobile, I'm going to uh, drop it here. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to have a second parameter. Okay. Okay. In the say something. Okay, so I'm just uh, having a different uh, signature set here. I have a single parameter set, I have a double parameter set, and I have a triple parameter set here. And I just added a second one. And this is in the derived class. Okay, and I compile this program and it, it's still good. Okay, so what I did here is nothing but uh, I actually have created another virtual member. Okay, so we were talking about what is a virtual here. So virtual is a keyword that you need to specify to the members uh, in your base class so that 
the derived class can overload or override them. Okay, so in this case, uh, since I don't have the over overloaded member of start with two parameters, I can able to actually have a virtual member here because this is a brand new member. So in this case, I actually overloaded the start in the derived class. Okay, so overload can happen uh, across the inheritance hierarchy, wherein the derived class and uh, and base class. So the virtual keyword must be there, otherwise you cannot um, override in the derived class. So uh, in this case, uh, this is the overriding. So wherein, wherein this can happen only in the derived classes. Okay. So you, you have a base class automobile and uh, the automobile should be virtual here then only you can actually override from your derived class class a uh, car. So the car I have to use an override keyword to override the base class implementation. So in this new member it is a virtual for me. Okay, so in this uh, uh, new case here, uh, it is uh, virtual because it's brand new here. And if I say override here, what will happen? And compile this, it doesn't say it, um, it's valid. Uh, it's no suitable method found to override. So it is actually override keyword identify, try to look up for the uh, same method on in your base class to override. Okay, so it's not allowed. And another thing, what will happen if I remove the override keyword here for start and compile again? So it again says, so because, um, okay, let me open up. So cannot override inherited member where it is actually throwing the error in the derived class saying, you cannot override because the base class member is not virtual. Okay, uh, because it is not marked virtual, abstract, or override. Okay, so if base class member is not virtual, so you cannot override it. So it is key to have a virtual members. Only virtual members can be overload uh, override in the derived class. Otherwise, they cannot. So there you have the control on which member you want to allow, which member you want to allow others to override its implementation and write its own. So by the way, what is override again? So that's a key thing here. So override, what I'm doing here is I'm doing some action in the base class as a virtual. So uh, I inherited from the uh, from the uh, from the automobile here, and I want to write my own implementation because I I, I don't want the base class uh, implementation that is provided. So what I'm going to do is I I will write my own implementation. Sometimes I want uh, a flavor of both. Okay, so I want the uh, base class to do its own job, and also write my own functionality. So um, so in this case, what I'm going to do is I have to go back and fix this. And then, oops, sorry, I just have to build this, nothing else. So I just have to compile that and it's good. And we'll uh, see the demo, how that's going to work. This is the polymorphism code. Okay, so to keep our thing simple, I will not go to a truck and a flying car for now. I will just hide them, comment them out, and uh, what I'm trying to do here is, now it is a more realistic wherein I have a car, and in this case, I will uh, turn my automobile to abstract, which makes a real sense, right? Because the other block which I uh, commented out uh, was actually using instance of the uh, automobile. That was that's why it was failing. So when I'm getting into the polymorphism, I'm trying to make it more meaningful uh, 
uh, class relationship here. So in this case, I'm creating instance of a car. So which uh, so nowhere I'm creating instance of automobile. As we discussed, abstract members cannot be instantiated directly. So abstract when I make my class abstract, that means I always want them to be base class of some other classes. So this becomes my base class, um, and I cannot create instance of it. So that's part of the abstraction that we discussed. Okay, uh, and uh, the car instance here, the car class is actually, okay, let me collapse this, uh, is inherited from automobile and it ha actually overrides the base class implementations. Okay, and in this case, I'm actually creating instance of the car. Okay, so automobile as a concept, it has some of the uh, attributes uh, given to me and I'm making use of them. So in this case, uh, car, I just have only one prop property, uh, which is category. So otherwise, uh, I can able to, uh, as part of the inheritance, I'm still able to access the make model category. So category is my car specific implementation, whereas make and model are base class implementations. So, so hope that makes it clear. So that's achieved using inheritance since car is getting inherited from automobile. So I'll try take this out. So if I don't inherit, what will happen? So everything else go for a toss because uh, in the first place, uh, all these uh, base dot start I'm trying to call uh, is gone because uh, this start is actually available only in the automobile not in the car and even the start is gone. So all these code blocks have failed. And uh, most importantly, where is my code? Oh yeah. So if you see this, uh, even the make and model is errorsome, but not the category because the category is the implementation of car, not the base class. So if I again inherit uh, car, from automobile, then everything is back. So that indicates that all the properties and attributes that are available in automobile are inherited by a car. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm actually extending the uh, base class methods or base class uh, functionality. So base class state and behavior, I have uh, the ability to extend them using inheritance. So in, in UML terms, it is referred to as a specialization. So when whenever you do uh, inheritance and implement the base class member, it becomes a specialized class of the base class. So in, in other context, we saw it's a child class. So in other context, we call it as a derived class. So so one. So it has a s multiple meanings at the different contexts or different uh, way you use it. So car is a specialized cl class of automobile. Car is a derived class of automobile or car is a child of automobile. So all stands same. And in this case, I have um, state definition wherein I have only category. Okay, and the behavior, I'm trying to override the base class implementations because I, I, in this case, I want to have the base class member implementation. Uh, this is calling the base class start and also calling the my own member here. Okay, so we'll try to run this code. So if you see, I just added the, uh, the right line um, um, uh, in such a way that uh, the output makes sense for me from where I'm calling. Okay, so I just had a, a class name here uh, as a constant. If I see, I just added a class name within the car, I'm just naming it as a car and in automobile, I just have the same uh, uh, constant class name as automobile. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to write down that name uh, the class name in my output. So the output is pretty much uh, writing the class name and the uh, values of that instance down the line. So it's actually trying to write down the make uh, instance name that I'm passing in, which is C1 or C2 or so on. 
uh, and the make model current uh, location which is uh, we will talk about this type uh, later on so this is a kind of a, a nested type we will talk about at the end of the session um, and uh, properties and number of wheels uh, so on so I'm trying to uh, put down uh, all the values that I'm uh, getting here or in uh, initialized so it, it shows me <coughs> that so when I when it's uh, when I invoke this code let me go back to the polymorphism demo okay here okay so here uh, this is where I'm setting the values which I'm defining the state setting the state of C1 so C1 is reflected here this is the instance name because that's the name I'm passing in at the methods uh, start honk and uh, open trunk right um, so when I hit the start c1 dot start so this is c1 dot start with single parameter okay um, c1 dot start wherein I pass only c1 there and it invoke the um, the automobile base class so the implementation here is actually calling the base dot start okay that's the reason it actually invoked the automobile in uh, version of the c1 dot start and uh, after that um, I'm writing something here console.write line which is from the car instance or car class and so you invoke the base class implementation as well as the current implementation using the override okay so I can straight away even avoid doing this so in vb.net this is called shadowing okay so I will just uh, take this away and compile this and run this so now I see I don't see automobile in the first place because I didn't call base class implementation I straight away call the car implementation okay so this is called uh, in vb.net shadowing or uh, in, um, in uh, polymorphism terms it is a overriding okay so this is about uh, overriding and we have already seen overloading and uh, next to topic uh, inheritance so 